Okay, good evening. Sorry for the delay. Uh, the executive session of the Wayne Board of Education regular meeting of December 21st, 2020 was convened in the Media Center of Anthony Wayne Middle School, 201 Garside Avenue, Wayne, New Jersey. The statement of compliance setting forth time, date, and location was read in accordance with the requirements of the Open Public Meetings Act and the roll call was taken. The meeting was recessed and is now being reconvened. Please rise for a flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, I get a mover to reconvene. Mr. Chair, Mr. Giordano. Okay, thank you. Dr. Toback. Let's begin with you. So one of the highlights of the year for the Board of Ed is always the holiday musical performance. And while this year we're not able to bring a live performance to the board and to the community, we do have a virtual holiday musical performance. So. Dr. Bouchard, if you could. No sound.
What a wonderful performance. Thank you to all of our elementary students and the staff who put this terrific show together. Thank you so much. Dr. Toback. 
So board members, as you can see, our agenda is packed for this evening. So based on the many presentations that we have, I'm gonna limit my administrative summary to just three items. Uh, the first is a notification. First of all, the Board of Ed meeting is being held at Anthony Way Middle School, other than a handful of employees and our board members and our board attorney. Um, it's a virtual meeting. As has been the case throughout the pandemic, the meeting is available for public view and public comment on Zoom, although this evening it is not available on Channel 77. Um, second item, required to report on HIV cases. During this reporting period, there was one case reported as HIV after thorough investigation. It was determined to not be a case of HIV. And thirdly, I'd just like to take a moment to wish everyone a happy holiday to all of our students, our employees, our residents, and last but not least, our board fed members. Happy holidays. I assume this will be rerun on Channel 77? It can be rerun on Channel 77. Channel 77 was not available this evening yeah. for a, like a simulcast. Right. Okay. Thank you. I just want the public to know that there'll be a second opportunity if they didn't tune in. Okay. So Dr. Bouchard, can you please pull up the Thought Exchange Diversity Survey results? See that again too. That was great. <laughs> okay, so board members, I'm going to move through this fairly quickly because some of the content will be covered later in some of the other presentations that we're going to do. But I would like to provide the community with feedback about the thought exchange. I would like to share the results with the community. And also, um, it should be noted that for anyone looking for more information, the presentation as well as a press release will be sent out tomorrow. So ultimately, the presentation will be available for public view on the Board of Education website. Um, so Dr. Bouchard, if you could move on. Okay, so um, we have a diversity, equity, and inclusion goal that um, we've been working on, and we're going to talk a lot about that tonight. But um, for as far as the thought exchange goes, the purpose of the thought exchange, I'm looking to see a little bit more about how the community sees things. So the question we ask is, um, what are the most important priorities we should consider as we work towards our goal of having a more diverse, inclusive, and culturally competent school system? Okay, so a very general question that allows any participant to weigh in on a variety of topics. So if you can move ahead, okay, we have pretty good participation. Um, so we can see the numbers there. And you can also see there's 31,052 ratings. So that is one of the highest numbers we've ever achieved in terms of ratings. And what that means is that there are many people, um, there was a thousand thoughts and there were many people that weighed in, but they may not have shared a thought, but what they did do is they came in and they rated different thoughts. So they felt very strongly. So people came in, they went through the thoughts that were shared by others and they rated them. And so that's a, that's a, that's a great number for it's as far as the ratings go. You go to the next page, please. Okay. So you can see the participation by subgroup, and you can see the, the vast majority of people that participated in this thought exchange were parents. Um, and you can see basically the other information. One of the groups that we had hoped um, would be more involved in the thought exchange um, are the students. And so we only have 6% participation from the students. So we're gonna take some additional steps to make sure the voices of our students are heard. Um, we're going to do focus groups. We're going to look at maybe running some focus groups for our students about some of these issues. And we're also looking of, of, um, into doing another thought exchange specifically for students. Next slide, please. And so we'll just give everybody time to read our top 10 thoughts. So these are the first five. Dr. Bouchard, if you can move on. Second set. Okay, Dr. Bouchard, if you go on now. Okay. So what I'm going to talk about now for the next few slides are themes that were established. So that exchange is software, it's artificial intelligence that basically goes in and evaluates all the different thoughts and all the different ideas shared by the community 
and the weight that different people assigned to each of the thoughts. And it comes up with some major themes within the exchange. Okay, so one of the words that um, surface regularly is different. So you can see the themes that emerged around differences. Okay, equal is another word that the artificial intelligence identified and then they organized three themes around that word. And then you have history. Okay, so history was an important topic and how to, history is taught um, and what history is taught was a very important topic for the participants. Richard, next slide. Okay, so this slide will take a little bit of time to explain. And like I said, if you're interested in, in knowing more, this is the differences report. Okay, and, and what that means is it, it's not only differences. If it was just differences, you would have side A, side B, you'd have no middle ground. So in other words, there would not be a third column in the middle. There is a third column in the middle. A third column in the middle is the middle ground. It's what people agree on. So you can see that the thought exchange organized 271 participants into one group. That's in the blue circle mm -hmm. on top, on the left. And then on the right is a green circle. There was 171 participants that were organized into, the, into that group. And you could see side A, you could see side B, and then you can see the middle ground. All right, Dr. Bouchard can go to the next slide. Okay, so this was another major difference. Okay, so you can see the numbers: 257 on side A, 126 on side B, and then you can see the common ground, which is similar to the common ground that was expressed in the prior differences slide. Okay, if you can go to the next slide. So you can see in this case, there was far more people on side A than side B, but there's also common ground that was similar to the common ground identified in the other um, slides, okay? This is the word cloud. So the word cloud basically take, takes wording, important wording from the top rated thoughts. And so these are the words that emerged from the top thoughts. And that's it. So thank you for all of our participants. I said um, this sheds a lot of um, insight for the district to pursue as we look forward to advance on this goal. This allows us to share um, some more information with all of our committees that have been organized to undertake this project and to help with this goal. So all this information will be very useful. Like I said, it will be posted to the public tomorrow. Okay. Um, at this point, we're on the student representative reports. Okay. Dr. Richard, if you could admit the students. Welcome. Sorry. <laughs> Welcome. Okay. Gina, would you like to go first? Uh, yeah. Good evening. Thank you for having me. Wayne Valley girls soccer ended the season with an outstanding 12 to two record. The team's lockdown defense came in at number nine in the state for girls soccer with an 0.43 goals allowed per game. Congratulations to jo junior Ryan Pena, who was selected to the 2020 all North Jersey boys cross country team. Ryan had an exceptional season this year and won the Big North One Championship, as well as the Garib Mountain Invitational. Congratulations to the Wayne Valley Marching Band on winning the 2020 Division I Regional Championship. With an outstanding score of 94.33, the band was crowned Mid-Atlantic Regional Champs as the highest scoring band from New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, Connecticut, Delaware, and Maryland. This marking period, Mrs. Aspiazu's senior health classes have been working on a culminating life project. Modeled after the Game of Life board game, students have applied the skills and lessons learned in class to plan out important parts of life, such as marriage and careers, while taking various potential challenges into account. Wayne Valley's chapter of the National Honor Society has had a very successful start to the year. The chapter modified their signature Kids Helping Kids tutoring program to meet COVID guidelines. 
The chapter also organized beautiful handcrafted greeting cards and almost $3,000 in store gift cards for their fall food drive. These contributions provided assistance to Wayne Valley and Ryerson families in need, as well as the Wayne Interfaith Network Food Pantry. Wayne Valley's Model United Nations Club has, meet, has been meeting weekly to analyze current global issues. They are diligently preparing for their first practice conference on the topic, Managing Global Infectious Disease Outbreaks, that will take place virtually in early January. This week, the Student Council has been leading a virtual spirit week. Students dressed up for Pink Out Monday, Anti-Pajama Day Tuesday, College Gear Wednesday, Valley Gear Thursday, and Festive Friday. Although it could not be held in person, the Valley is One in Instagram page has been sharing photos of students dressed up to continue the tradition. Joseph. Thank you for having me this evening. Uh, the Wayne Hills 2020-2021 Governor's Educator of the Year winners are Mrs. Del Moro, English teacher, and Mr. Keogh, guidance counselor. Congratulations. This fall, we had to put our traditional Spirit Week activities on hold. In the meantime, our student council collected donations to provide supermarket gift cards for Wayne Hills High School families in need and the PTO food pantry. Each class was given a community pass account to be used strictly for this gift card food drive. This is where the individual classes work to sway as many donations their way so that their classes collected the most money, which will be added to the point totals for Spirit Week in the spring. The Wayne Hills Student Council was able to collect over $5,000, which will make the holiday season a little bit brighter for those in need. The Wayne Hills Junior Board members of Chilton Hospital sold candy after school on Tuesday to raise money for the Soothing Paws Pet Therapy Program at Chilton Hospital. With a current team of 13 dogs, this program provides pet therapy visits for patients and hospital staff. The Tri-M National Music Honor Society held their virtual inductions on Tuesday, December 15th. The program featured recognition of new members, guest speaker, Mr. John Terry, and a featured essay by new member, Darnia Yushenko. Thank you. Okay. Did you have donations to read, either of you? No, there were no donations for us. Nothing. To read. Okay. Thank you both. And thank you for your work this year. We look forward to seeing you back in 2021. <laughs> Have thank a happy you. I holiday. It. Thank you. you. Too. Good night. Hold on. We're looking to see if our auditor is here for her presentation. Hello. Are you there? I, I am. Oh, there you are. Hi, Kathy. Hello. <laughs> How are you? Good. Okay. Well, um, you're, you're I, on. Welcome. I, all right. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, happy to be here and thanks for fitting me into your busy December meeting. The music was lovely. I have musicians in my own house. Um, so 2020, unusual on every front. Um, so it was a challenge as far as audits were concerned, but um, our firm decided we were gonna be out of the gate looking at how to do it. And I think that we put together a really good plan. We worked with software companies, we worked with all the school staff, and I have to say um, we were embraced and we embraced the change that came about and we made it through. And now we are desperately trying to get audits issued. So in case I get so wrapped up that I forgot to mention, we were waiting to issue the report because we were waiting for other post benefit information from the Division of Pensions. That information was released last Monday. And so we are working to get all our reports updated for that information and released. And I was hopeful to have Wayne's report released this week, but it looks like we'll probably go into next week. So we will do that as quickly as possible. So again, I tell you every year that the comprehensive annual financial report is in the neighborhood of 200 pages. And I like to extract information that's useful for a board member to be familiar with. So we always talk about fund balance. We compare what we had at June of 20 compared to June of 19. And as you can see, the overall increase is 1.5 million. And and all of that was in the way of capital reserve. 
So at the end of the year, when the district determines how much money they had left over and available, you can um, maintain 2% as unassigned fund balance. That's the 4.2 million you have at the end of the year. In that 4.2 million is also um, extra state aid. So you'll see down below in the middle of the first page, the 985,000 is extraordinary aid and non-public transportation aid that the district received for 20. The money came in in the summer and you're allowed to appropriate that um, during 2021. So that'll be helpful with um, any expenses that you're facing as far as COVID-19. Um, we show how the district generated 1.5 million when the pandemic hit. I remember saying to myself that the savings in school districts would be marginal because you were still paying salaries, you were paying tuitions, you were paying health benefits, you were paying all the major costs. The discretionary portion is very small. But I was very happily surprised as we've gone through audits, we do over 80 school audits in our firm to find out that there really was some savings. So Wayne experienced that as well. So the unexpended balance of the budget was 6.2 million. You only had 300,000 in open purchase orders at the end of the year. So it was 5.9 million. That was up about 1.2 million over last year. So that's really what you achieved in the year of the three and a half months of the pandemic. And then your budget fund balance each year, you withdrew money from capital reserve. And that's how you ended up with 1.5. Each year, I also say that it's great to be able to um, achieve that continuity from year to year. So for the last three years, the district has budgeted 1,750,000 to offset taxes in each year. And I'm gonna take a very slight pause to say that we had an exit conference with BA and the assistant BA, and we talked about how you're doing in 2021, what resources are available, what type of expenses have you faced to know that you're set as far as if there's maintenance expenditures or capital expenditures. And again, I'll reiterate that the extraordinary aid from last year, that 985,000 is available to appropriate for any purpose in 2021. I think that's all my comments with that. Um, move on to the capital reserve account itself. You started with 5.2 million. You were able to de deposit 4.7 million during the year and you withdrew 3,253. There were some other little changes in there, but that was the primary um, activity. Ending with 6.8 million at the end of the year. And then I went a little further to say at June 30th, you had 6.8 million, but in the 2021 budget, you withdrew a million. So you're looking at 5.8 million um, at this point until the board determines if there's anything else that is needed before the end of the year. In the capital projects funds, that's referendums and other projects that the board has authorized. You have several small balances on projects. And I found that the first five that I've listed had um, the ESIP lease and the SDA grants associated with them. They have all been closed out in the fall. I think it was October. And so all of that is um, gone and cleaned up. Um, move into your uh, enterprise funds, the food service fund. I remember the day the pandemic hit, I happened to be with two of my good friends who are school business officials. And the first thing that they talked about was feeding the students. And I said, oh my God, of all the things that you have to worry about in a day, that was the number one. So, um, I show you the difference in revenues and expenditures for the year. Obviously the revenue was down, the expenses were down, and the district has negotiated with your food service management company to compromise on the guarantees and try to help the district um, sustain. So in a conversation with the BA and the assistant BA, we talked about um, you know, continuing to work with food service contractor and um, you know, trying to estimate what the um, what the shortfalls will be and try to end up in a um, not so bad. I can't say positive, but there will there will probably be some costs associated with that um, 
enterprise fund, meaning that the board would send money over to subsidize. But again, um, Bill and Cheryl will be in touch with me and we share ideas as to how to manage it. The extended day program um, this year, the district goes for the certificate of excellence. And one of the comments was that if there are salaries being paid out of an enterprise fund, it has to bear part of that long-term liability for pension. So this year we implemented that. So when I show you the um, change in revenue and expenditures, it's off by 700,000 because we um, did a proration of the pension liability. So where we say at the end of the year, the unrestricted net position was a negative 411. If you add the 700 back, you really had a positive balance of 300,000 there. Again, in conversations with Bill and Cheryl, it's gonna be challenging, um, but both of them have their eyes and ears on it and they're gonna make whatever um, changes necessary. Uh, the wraparound program for the um, half day after kindergarten ended with an unrestricted net position of 41,000. Then we talk about the long-term liabilities of the district. You have bonds, you have premiums with the bonds, you have some capital leases, you have the net pension liability, which in the last three years has been decreasing and compensated absences, which are the unused days um, that the staff have accrued. And then you see where we um, allocated a portion of the net pension to the extended day program. One comment I wanted to make is that um, the district's bonds are gonna be paid off in the year two, 2024. And so, you know, whatever the district's capital needs are, I don't know if you've already started to think about a referendum or what, what the needs are, but the debt service will be paid off in another three years. And that was pretty much the financial end of it. Um, you know, we started this year with a new assistant um, BA right when we were trying to do the audit. And I have to say, she hit the ground running on the first day, closing out funds in her very first days in the district. And um, she and Bill work well together and they, um, they're they a great team to work with. Also, um, we have a new treasurer. So some of the issues that we've had in the past two or three years are no longer an issue. So I'm so happy to report that um, Wayne is in great shape, great people, and um, there's really reason why there are no recommendations. Your people take everything to heart and seriously, and it makes our jobs wonderful. So we just made a little management suggestion, making the board aware that GASB 84 deals with fiduciary funds, was supposed to be implemented for this past fiscal year ending June of 20. They extended it because of the pandemic until June of next year. Again, you have wonderful staff. We are educated on the topic. And so we will interact and we will plan and work with your people to make sure they're in the best of shape. And um, that's all I have to report. So if anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Board members. Well, you're getting a clap. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a very substantive report, Kathy. Thank you so much. Uh, we had it in advance. So I'm sure if anyone had questions, they planned ahead for that. And I don't see any hands raised. Um, and if we have anything going forward, we certainly know how to reach out to you or Mr. Moffitt. So okay. thank you so much. Thank yeah. you for all your hard work under the circumstances virtually. You did a phenomenal job as always and uh, have a happy holiday. You too. Wishing you, you and your families the best. Thank you. Take care. Hmm? I'm sorry, Mr. P I'm sorry, Dr. Toback wanted to say something before you go. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, make a very um, brief comment regarding the performance of the business office. Anytime that there is an audit that involves um, no findings, um, especially for an organization of this size, that really is a pretty extraordinary accomplishment, something that does not happen every day. It shows obviously that the employees of the district are serious about meeting requirements, following board policies, following financial standards, reporting standards, every other type of standard. An audit is a very comprehensive look at a school district's budget and a school district's um, performance 
financially during the course of a year. And so, like I said, to, to meet that standard or, or no recommendations is really exceptional. So I just wanted to once again thank and congratulate the business office for a great job this year. Absolutely. Thank you. You're 100% correct, Dr. Toback. We have phenomenal staff. Okay, moving on. Mr. Moffat, I believe you're up. Yes, thank you. Uh, I just want to report that I'm in receipt uh, of the official uh, results of the past school election. Uh, that is uh, certification that I received from the Office of the County Clerk, County of Passaic. Uh, and I'll, I'll read them into the record. Uh, the actual report will be available in the past four minutes. Um, Mr. Don Pavlak, I'll read first, uh, with a total vote count of 17,116. Mrs. Catherine Kazan, uh, with a total uh, vote count of 16,457. And Mr. Sean Duffy, a total vote count of 16,070 votes. Once again, this will be part of our minutes if anyone wants to look at that uh, certification by the county clerk. And uh, congratulations on all the members that uh, voted in in this election. Thank you, Mr. Moffitt. And congrats to my colleagues once again on their successful race and return to the board. So next we have our district goal. Did you want to start off on that one, Mrs. Reisman? Yes. Joe, you can pull up the presentation. Um, tonight we have with us our district consultant, Tamika Reese, and principal of Pakanak Lake School, Mr. Roger Rogelin. Uh, they have been working to advance our goal. We invited Mr. Roglin to join us tonight because he recently worked with a committee of staff members to devise our district mission statement, and he will be able to share that tonight. Um, Ms. Reese has been working with a number of our committees, and she's going to provide an update with um, just to detail the work that has been accomplished and the work that's in progress. Um, Tamika, I will turn it over to you at this point so that you can get started. Good evening. Good evening, President Kazan, Vice President Buddha, members of the board, Dr. Toback, Ms. Reichman, staff and community members. I am so pleased to be here tonight to share the district goal update with you. Dr. Bouchard, please advance. Thank you. From the district goal, there were several action items that we've been working on in committees develop a district mission statement with a commitment to equity, diversity, and inclusion, review curriculum and instruction, specifically English language arts and history, review human resource policies, procedures, and hiring practices, develop new place for hate 2.0, assess nicknames, mascots, slogans, and school symbols, review student achievement outcomes, schedules, and related data, and review social emotional learning programs and professional development. I'd like to now present Mr. Rogelin, the chairperson of the mission committee. He will go over the process that we use to develop a mission statement, as well as present the final draft of the mission statement. Good evening. Good evening, uh, President Kazan and board members and uh, Dr. Toback and Mrs. Reichman. Uh, this was a privilege to uh, take on this assignment. Uh, it's something that I think everybody on the committee uh, was very committed to, um, and not just for this, but probably uh, years before. Uh, I'd like to describe the process and then I'll tell you who was on the committee. Uh, we had three major meetings. First meeting uh, was 
uh, identifying what exactly is a mission statement, how's that going to work, what's the process going forward. We then divided the committee into three teams. Uh, we tried to keep the teams diverse in terms of their role and their level of uh, school, elementary, middle, or high school. Um, each of those teams came up with a number of bulleted items or statements that they thought were important to be included in the mission statement. We then took one writer from each of the three teams and they work collaboratively to do the final draft. The final draft was then reviewed by the committee as a whole. And I have to say, we were probably a role model for the US Congress. <laughs> <laughs> right, Tamika? It was <laughs> done absolutely. with absolute civility, respect. People didn't always agree, but they did it respectfully. And we came up with what we believe is a strong statement that everybody on the committee uh, could buy into and, and agree on. Um, I think that process was very important because we now have uh, all these evangelists who are on the committee who are going to go forward and promote it in their various schools. So the committee uh, comprised of team one was Denise Malone, counselor at Fallon. Sabrina Brewer, social studies teacher at Schuyler Colfax Middle School. Talia Hampton, a teacher at Wayne Valley High School. Kelly Venetia Crilly, high school counselor at Hills. Team two was Jamie Morano, grade one teacher at Ryerson. Claire Donahue, a um, ELL teacher at JFK. Jasmine, just wait. Just... We had a parent, uh, Brad Siegel, parent, long-term parent in Wayne. Uh, I'll also mention that he's a superintendent in another district, <clears throat> but that was an aside. Sarah Shalachi, a high school teacher, English teacher at Hills, and Kim Mapp, uh, actually the substance abuse coordinator at Valley. Team three was Michelle Maturo, special ed teacher at A.P. Turyun, Kate Marcinowski, language arts teacher at Anthony Wayne, Patricia Trish Montini, middle school counselor at GW, and John Terry, social studies teacher at Hills. The three writers were John Terry, Sarah Salachi, and Sabrina Brewer. And uh, that is the team that worked together to, to uh, develop this particular mission statement. Uh, would you like me to read the statement? I don't know what the uh, next step, okay. Oh, there you go, I can read it off of there. Um, the final that we submitted was the Wayne Township Public School District is strengthened by the collective efforts of its community to raise informed, inquisitive, and compassionate members of society. We are committed to delivering a culturally responsive, critically engaging curriculum for students of all backgrounds. We provide instruction that is academically rigorous and affirms the human, the humanity and dignity of all learners. We are dedicated to a constant evaluation. This is an important part. We are dedicated to a constant evaluation of our current systems and policies and enact necessary changes to ensure equity and opportunity for all. Under the guiding principle that education is a human right, we provide students with equitable access to education that empowers them to positively engage in our democratic society and contribute to the global community. Thank you, Mr. Roglin. Um, be before um, Ms. Reese moves on, I just wanted to say I was able to join this committee and um, I had such admiration for all the participants, the, the heart, the passion, the level of compassion and um, the overall inspiration was truly remarkable. There was um, a great deal of time and, and thoughtfulness that went into it. And I'm seeing this with all the committees. So, um, you know, I'm really proud that the district has embraced this goal. Um, the, the work has been phenomenal and we'll continue to share out. But um, this was the first step in 
driving our mission. And we're really proud of what the committee presented to us. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Rockland. One person on the committee I need to acknowledge, and that's Tamika Reese. Tamika was inspiring, motivating, knowledgeable. Um, I really enjoyed working with Tamika. So thank you for uh, setting that up that way. Thank you. Thank you. And happy, uh, happy holiday, everybody. You too. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Roglin. Tamika, you can continue. Okay, thank you. I just wanna add, it was an incredible experience working with the members of that committee. I mean, we worked hard and long, sentence by sentence, word by word. And, you know, it was just fabulous group to work with. And I was proud to be a part of the team. Okay, so we'll move on to curriculum and instruction. The curriculum instruction committees have been created at the elementary and middle high school levels. Training has been provided on identifying seven types of bias found in instructional materials, i.e. invisibility, stereotyping, imbalance and selectivity, unreality, fragmentation and isolation, linguistic bias, and cosmetic bias. Committees have begun to review books, texts, and novels used in English language arts for bias. Committees are identifying diversity of author, i.e. male, female, white, black, Native American, Hispanic, Latinx, Asian, LGBTQ+, disabled, non-Christian, and other. Dr. Bashor, you can advance. Thank you. A spreadsheet is being compiled that contains the name of the instructional resource, diversity of author, and any instructional bias found in each resource. This will enable any gaps to be identified. The history committee is reviewing the topics covered in each textbook to identify types of bias and begin identifying supplementary material that might be used to present a balanced perspective of specific topics. Human resources and hiring practices. The human resources and hiring committee has received foundational training on using human resources as a lever for equity. The first step in our work will be to analyze the applicant pool for a variety of jobs to determine the diversity of candidates who applied. Then data will be analyzed to ascertain at what point in the process those candidates were eliminated. The goal is to determine if candidates were eliminated through initial screening criteria, the selection of candidates to interview, or during the interview process. This will provide valuable information regarding any biases that may be inherent within the hiring process. In addition, three committees are being created to examine the following areas for equity, diversity, and inclusion. Advertising, job postings, job descriptions and application, recruitment sources, hiring process. We're gonna look at the application again through that lens, candidate screening, committee structure, interview questions, candidate selection, and onboarding. No Place for Hate 2.0. The committee is exploring a variety of ways to publicize the activities that are being conducted at each school. This will enhance community awareness of the work being done to foster a bias-free and inclusive school climate. As they begin to plan for next year, the committee is researching activities that can be scaffolded across grade levels along an anti-racist continuum, i.e. in the elementary, identify, and self-awareness through an intersectional lens, middle school, stereotyping, prejudice, and implicit bias, high school, social justice, and activism. Nicknames, mascots, slogans, and symbols. The committee met and discussed possible ways to gather community input primarily related to the varying viewpoints regarding the mascot. As Dr. Toback mentioned, the thought exchange was conducted in order to ascertain the perception of priority issues related to diversity, equity, and inclusion in the district. The data collected is being reviewed for themes, and as Dr. Toback mentioned, 
that was completed and we're continuing to look and go deeper as well. And in particular, the majority of the participants were parents and there is a need to obtain additional input from students and staff. Possible next steps include two additional thought exchanges with one specifically targeted to students and another targeted to staff or conducting focus groups with those populations to obtain their input and feedback as Dr. Toback previously mentioned. Data analysis. The data analysis team is collecting quantitative information disaggregated by students with disabilities, English language learners, socioeconomically disadvantaged, race and gender in the following areas, HIV, AP classes, GNT placement, discipline, graduation rates, attendance rates, academic achievement and growth in English language arts and mathematics. This initial analysis will be the, will be the foundation of a root cause and gap analysis. Social emotional learning. This area has been divided into three subcommittees, school culture, professional development, SEL programs and SEL vision. The school culture professional development committee is exploring various school climate surveys for distribution to staff and students to assess perceptions of school climate. In addition, this committee is focusing on types of professional development that would be beneficial to staff with an emphasis on self-awareness, implicit bias, microaggressions, and empathy and the effect on students. This is similar to professional development that was provided to the full diversity, equity, and inclusion committee. The SEL programs committee is obtaining information from each school regarding the type of SEL programming that is conducted and its effectiveness. This will provide a foundation for determining whether to continue, revise, or eliminate a current program. The SEL Vision Committee is drafting a mission vision statement in order to provide a district-wide umbrella to guide the goals, objectives, and outcomes of SEL programming. And that concludes the goal update. Thank you, Ms. Reese. Um, I just wanna echo what Mr. Roglin has said. Um, it's been truly wonderful and um, such a valuable resource for us to have an expert from the field. We've really brought in um, our thinking and expanded our knowledge. Just today, I was we were conducting interviews and sitting with the committee, listening to comments about how we've changed our practice. Um, we're much more reflective. We're already implementing so many of the strategies. But um, what resonated most with me was um, a tribute to you, Tamika, um, just um, sharing what a positive experience in professional development has been and a desire um, from our staff members to have more professional development. So we're excited that this is a multi-year goal and we will continue to learn from you and, and work with you. Um, at this time, if there's any questions, we're happy to take them and respond. Anyone, board members? Well, I think we're off to a, an amazing start. <laughs> uh, as we can see, this is quite substantive. Um, it crosses every area of how we operate a school district. And um, if anyone thinks we haven't really delved into this deeply, they would be mistaken. And it will take time and patience uh, for us to reach the end of this goal. But I think we're making tremendous progress. And under your guidance, uh, Ms. Reese, I think we're moving in a very positive direction. Um, as Ms. Reichman just said, it's already being implemented in our hiring practices. And that's wonderful. So thank you for that. And I'm sure we'll hear from you again in the next update. And we appreciate your work on this project. So. Thank you very much. It's a, been a, truly a privilege, and I'm glad to be continuing the work. And I wish everyone a wonderful and safe holiday. Same to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so we have a few.
of human resources tonight in the area of M, human resources, item 27. We have the M4, which is approval of appointment district staff. Line number two, technology specialist to be revised. First name from Tim to Ethan, D-E-T-I-M. Revised start date from December 18th, 2020 to January 4th, 2021. Number three, line item three for M4 is withdraw appointment uh, of Kristen Sotman. L-T-R-E-L-A at A-W. Number four, Sinza Rodano, revised start date from January 20, 2021 to January 19, 2021. We also have an addition in the emergent section under X, emergent uh, school source legal. We are adding number one, which is X1, approval of examination for cause. Recommended action reads as follows. Resolve at the Board of Education upon the recommendation of the superintendent hereby approves Dr. Anthony DeMarco to perform a psychological slash psychiatric examination of employee ID number 8704 at Board of Education expense. And a written report detailing the results of such examination is, the, is to be provided confidentiality to the board uh, within 30 days of this date, December 21st, 2020. And that concludes the changes or updates to the agenda tonight. Thank you, Mr. Moffitt. At this point, we're moving to our first public session. This portion of the meeting is open to citizens for comment on agenda items only. Residents are to state their names, addresses, and subject matter. Comments may be limited to five minutes per person. Members of the public are discouraged from speaking negatively about an employee or student. The board bears no responsibility for comments made by the public. Comments regarding employees or students cannot be legally responded to by the board. Other comments may be responded to tonight or at subsequent meetings under old business. Can I get a mover? Move. Mr. Duffy, Mr. Giordano. Okay. Dr. Bouchard. Are you there, Ms. Cluck? Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Hi, um, my name's uh, Katie Cluck. I'm at 34 Hillcrest Drive. Um, I just really wanted to thank you for all of your commitment to the work um, on diversity, equity, and inclusion. And I thought everything tonight was really, really great. I really encourage you in the student and faculty focus groups um, and just the mission statement and all of the plans for the curriculum were just really, really great. Um, I, I'm an alumni of Wayne Valley and I worked on the uh, No Place for Hate uh, when I was in school, but seeing No Place for Hate 2.0, I really think uh, focusing specifically on anti-racism and intersection intersectionality um, will be, and putting the focus on that will make it more useful and more effective. Um, and I'm just really, really great, uh, happy to see that. And I just want to commend you for your work and um, thank you. Have a nice day. Madam President, seeing no other hands are raised, I move to close. Thank you. Well, sorry, <laughs> we do have one hand. <laughs> Can you admit that person, Dr. Burchard? Hi, so I just wanted to say thank you too. Um, I really see the commitment and like change in like um, the district goals this time. Like I see like, um, the, like the things you planned and everything. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't want to interrupt you, but you need to state your name and address oh, for the record. I'm so sorry. Um, okay. My name is Lavelle Midar, uh, 23 Villains Avenue. Um, I'm a student at Wayne Valley. Um, so yeah, thank you for like all the change, uh, changes you've done. I've seen like actual um, change like happening, my own problems and stuff. And yeah, I just wanna like put that out there. Thank you. Mrs. Scher. Madam President, seeing no more hands raised, I move to close. Second. Mrs. Scher and Mr. Giordano, okay.
Thank you. We had some committees meet this evening or this week. Who would like to go first? Mr. Giordano? Good evening. Uh, the communications committee met this evening. Uh, present were Dr. Toback, uh, Ms. Uh, Albanese and myself. Uh, most of the stuff that was covered from the meeting uh, regarded the thought exchange, which Dr. Toback has presented in great detail uh, and pre uh, presented it very thoughtfully. Thank you very much. Um, we further talked about um, the extensive coverage of uh, the Wayne school system in the media, there have been many uh, articles placed out between uh, opening and closing of schools, between COVID, between sports. Uh, it was a very, very comprehensive set of weeks uh, covered by the press. Uh, and the third thing we talked about was uh, the concept of how to publicize the future school budgets uh, with the changing virtual times. How do we get this out to the public and, and get a, a better understanding of it? Uh, kind of move the times here and anticipate any issues that will be coming up in the future. And that's basically what we covered in our meeting this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Giordano. Mr. Sheriff, I think you were next. Uh, this evening, personnel went, met, went, met with Ms. Clark, Mr. Pavlock, Ms. Kumar, and myself. Uh, we went over a stipend request the minutes from last meeting, the HR items on the agenda for tonight, a unionization of dispatchers, and we were told that they're in the process of interviewing for the assistant principal at Schuyler Colfax, and we talked about adding a possible position in the tech world. That's it. Anyone else? Does that cover it for tonight? Okay. Well, we have a whole agenda to move. Who'd like to begin? Mr. Duffy, you need to unmute. Please unmute your mic. Madam President, if we can move the entire agenda as one. I will second that. Okay, Mr. Duffy, Mr. Mr. Um, I'm sorry, Pavlak. Um, it's been a long day, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Is there any question or discussion on the agenda? Okay, well, seeing none, roll call Mr. Muffet. Mr. Bubba? Um, no to M1 number nine, yes to the rest. Mr. Duffy? Yeah. Mr. Giordano? Yes. Mrs. Kumar? Yes. Mr. Pavlak? Uh, yes to everything, no to M1 num number nine. Mrs. Putup? Yes. Mrs. Shear? Yes. And Mrs. Kazan? Yes. Motion carries. Okay. Now I have to find the second public portion to read. <laughs> okay. This portion of the meeting is open to citizens for comment on any topic. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mrs. Albanese. We had one retirement. My apologies. Thank you, Mrs. Kazan. Uh, Linda Van Wingerden has served the Wayne community for 21 years as a power professional. During her time at Pines Lake, she has worked in our self-contained programs, providing her students with support and encouragement. She has always been an advocate for her students, ensuring they get the resources they need, while also maintaining high expectation for their progress. We are so very grateful for her dedication to our community and we wish her all the best in her retirement. Congratulations. Thank you very much. 
This portion of the meeting is open to citizens for comment on any topic. Residents are to state their names, addresses, and subject matter. Comments may be limited to five minutes per person. Members of the public are discouraged from speaking negatively about an employee or a student. The board bears no responsibility for comments made by the public. Comments regarding employees or students cannot be legally be responded to by the board. Other comments may be responded to tonight or at subsequent meetings under old business. Can I get a mover? Move. Mr. Giordano, Mr. Second. Chair, you have to raise your hand because I can't always hear you through your masks. If you could just, that would be helpful. Thank you. If I didn't hear you correctly. Okay. I don't see any hands. Madam President, seeing no hands raised, I move to close the public portion. Mr. Pavlak, Mr. Duffy. Okay, well, good. <laughs> uh, all right, old business. New business. Mrs. Scher. Um, I just wanted to say a few things. One is I'm hoping that the cohorts for the high school going to the two cohorts will be discussed and taken care of by the time we come back in January. Not that that's when we're going to start our discussion. That's what I'm hoping for. Um, my second thing is I just want to say that I love the virtual holiday show. It was so adorable. It's so sad we couldn't have it in person, but that definitely made up for it. That was very, very cute. And uh, happy holidays to everybody in the district and the employees and, and Wayne and all around. Everybody stay safe. That's it. Anyone else? Mr. Bubba? I just want to say that um, in the past week, one of my favorite teachers from Wayne Hills passed, Mr. Ruffini who was a very dedicated science teacher, also did a lot of work with charity and also coached me on the bowling team for one year. Um, I just wanted to say that he was a really great guy and uh, to his family, I hope they understand how much he meant to all of his students. And rest in peace, Mr. Rafini. Thank you, Mr. Bubba. And he also ran the Leo Club, which was an amazing organization, and he really taught children about community service. Mrs. Putup, I think you had your hand up. I just want to wish everyone a happy, healthy holiday. I want to thank our high school students for helping their neighbors. Thank you. Sorry, I was on mute. <laughs> I'll wrap it up. I'm happy to say we are finally bidding a not so fond farewell to the year 2020. While this has been a challenging year to say the least, I wanna focus on the positive and a feeling of gratitude. I'm grateful to the scientists who are working hard every day to come up with therapies and vaccines to bring this virus to an end. I'm grateful to the first responders, police officers, firefighters, EMS, nurses and doctors who continue to fight this virus every day and put themselves at risk for us. Also, all our essential workers who kept our deliveries coming and our shelves stopped. I'm grateful to all the parents who've done their best to adapt to the online learning they were thrust into and for their patience and understanding. I'm grateful to the bus drivers, custodians, paraprofessionals, food service workers, and support staff who have come to work every day to ensure our children continue to get the education they need and deserve. I'm grateful to the administrators who keep their buildings running despite difficulties with staffing and obstacles out of their control. I'm grateful to our central office administration and superintendent for all their hard work to get the schools ready for hybrid learning and to come up with the plan to give our students the most we could despite the restrictions. My screen went blank. Can you all hear me still? Okay. I'm most grateful to our teachers. We know how difficult this has been and we do so appreciate all that you do for your students. They need to know, they need you now more than ever. And as always, you stepped up and continue to show up every day for our children. 
I'm grateful for the members of our school community who we lost this year. They will be missed and remembered for their contributions and lives they touched. Suzanne Karansky, Senora Apaza, Dr. Rasa, and Maureen Casanis. And finally, I'm grateful to my colleagues on the Board of Education. The decisions we've made all year have not been easy, but everyone showed up, they asked the important questions and made the best decisions necessary to keep our schools open and safe for everyone. I wanna wish you all a safe and happy holiday season and look forward to seeing everyone in the new year. Let's continue to work together as a community and support each other in this shared challenge of COVID. It's not over yet, but I see the light at the end of the tunnel and I'm hoping for a much brighter 2021. At this time, we need to resume executive session. Um, I can't say whether or not we will take action, uh, but if we do, we'll come back into public to do so. Um, so again, that's the end of this portion of the meeting. Have a good night.